How are you? Good. Good to be here. Good to good, good to have. I haven't. I don't think I've. I don't think you and I have spoken since you uh, went through the mayor's race and did all that. And it's a new year now. So all that go well for you? Well, I learned a lot. I'm sorry we lost, but I also think Freddie's doing a great job. And um, you know, there is no better way to get to know <laughs> your community than to run for mayor. Well, it's true that. So. True that. Mm-hmm. I don't. I, you know, I don't. I don't have any. I don't take any. It's Freddie. Might be, want to listen up to this because Heidi just said he's doing a good job, and Matt Murphy's about to say, "I don't, I don't know that I have any criticism yeah. with the way that he's doing it." And now there's a couple, there's some big decisions to come, uh, transit decisions on the way, uh, some other decisions that are important to a lot of Nashvilleians and uh, and people that live in Davidson County. So we'll see. Transit's huge. Yeah, yeah. it's a big deal. It's yeah. a, and we'll and we'll see what he does with it. Right. Um, uh, speaking of huge, I mean, obviously education, big deal. Um, you wanted to come on and talk about this, and and I wanted to have you on uh, to discuss it. Um, we don't know what we don't know, and we don't know the details of what will be in a bill soon to be dropped, I guess, in the House of Representatives and simultaneously in the Senate. I don't know how they're going to do it. Uh, give me your, your overview of where you think we are in terms of education in the state of Tennessee. Well, let me just correct that it has been dropped, and so the bill has been filed. So we do have the bill. Um, we don't have any of the language. Right. It's yeah, going to be yeah. made in rulemaking subsequent right. Right. to it. And by the way, it'll probably pass be, or be voted on and likely pass before we know what, what it's going to do to well, Nancy well. Pelosi taught us that. <laughs> yeah, you got you to pass the bill to see what's in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, um, you know, this is very alarming. And, and the reason I wanted to come here and talk about it, I've got a bill to repeal it coming up, um, is because this is a scam. And, um, and I think Tennesseans need to know that. And the reason we need to know that is because this is going to blow an $800 million hole in our budget from the downbeat. And then taxpayers are going to be on the hook in, in perpetuity. And it's just going to get worse. And we know that that's what's happening because we're watching that happen right now in Arizona. And the same people who pushed the voucher program in Arizona and in New Hampshire and in all of these other states that have adopted it um, are pushing it here. Mm-hmm. And how, how is it when you say it's a scam? What do you mean by that? So, you know, for a long time, people have been wanting to get out of the business of paying for public schools on taxpayer dollars. And um, that seemed to be something that nobody was ever able to, to make happen because, you know, quite frankly, Americans really want public school. Um, this is a workaround that also is profitable to a handful of people. Functionally, it's privatizing public education. That's really what you're doing. And we know this because we know that um, I've got a chart here in front of me. 80% of the kids in Arizona who took these vouchers never went to a public school. So what you're doing when you give a kid $7,000 to go to a private school is you're, you're subsidizing private family schools that are already people who are already sending their kids to private schools or home schools. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and, Guess what? That ends up being a net loss for taxpayers because you have to continue to fund public education. And then on top of that, you're going to have to find the money to be able to subsidize these private school education. When you say that it creates a a, there's a lot to unpack with what you're saying. Um, And and just for the interest of our listening audience, I want Heidi to be able to present her side of things. And I'm not here to shout you down or to argue. I just want I just want to hear your side of this. But you're. You say that there will be an $800 million hole in the budget. How? It's going to cost us $800 million when you look at the amount that we are going to be paying for the private school kids that are going to adopt this option. I mean, if you send your kids to a private school right now, you can get this $7,000 to subsidize the, um, the tuition that you're paying. Right, right. I'm just trying to do this math. And I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to pick nits here, but eight that's a hundred and fourteen thousand two hundred and eighty five students right. getting a seven thousand dollars scholarship. That's right. That's right. Well, and and uh, let me just tell you well, well, I mean, are you just making these numbers up? No. It's, th- these numbers are ridiculous. No, those those numbers are not ridiculous. Where are you getting the eight hundred million dollar figure from? Because we know that in Arizona We're not talking about Arizona, we're talking about Tennessee. No, I know, but we have we have a model where we can actually look at what happens when we do this. Because the architects of the legislation, which you have not seen, which I have not seen, 
say that no money, it, they're, they're not going to take any money outside of the system except for those kids who are no longer going to public, because the money follows the child, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Do you not think the money should follow the child? Um, you know, if we were actually talking about choice and we were actually going to fully fund public education, I think that that's a defensible position. Wait a minute, you say fully fund education. We don't fully fund public education what, what is now. The, define that. Well, we have... Um, infa- How much is enough? By some projections, there are people who say that, you know, we need an extra $2 billion um, to put into education to fully fund... Um, our school counselors, our RTI instructors actually pay teachers a living wage, um, you know, deal with um, the program. Uh, what's, the, what, what, what's, the edu- what's the education budget now? Um, the education budget now is uh, we get over a billion from I mean, roughly from from the, the federal government. And it's four point five, I think. So you're saying you need two more billion dollars to fully fund it. Yeah. And then you can guarantee that the grades are going to go up. You can guarantee that the students are going to perform. Well, I can't guarantee that. But, boy, we sure see that in states that do fully fund education that they have much better outcomes. Like yes. what? Like, like what Massachusetts. State? So you, you believe that we should take like on a, a, a Massachusetts model. For funding um, education. We are so far. I, I'm just asking. I mean, but let me just tell you, this is like asking me if I think I should have filet mignon when we're actually running out of food. I mean, seriously, I, right now I'm looking at, at staving off the damage that we're about to incur by adopting this program. Yes, that would be wonderful. But but we are so far from that. Let me just say, right now, the emergency is, and every single taxpayer in Tennessee needs to understand this, that we are going to be on the hook for subsidizing this program, and the guys who are doing it are going to be long gone. Wait, so so I want to back up, because I, I understand that you want to focus on models from other states that you believe that they're about to pattern the Tennessee model on, which we don't. We don't see the language yet, but Tennessee has an education problem, a public education problem. Absolutely. By by anybody's assessment. And do you believe that giving parents more opportunity to involve themselves in public education, even to the point that they're they have a, a better ability to make a decision about getting their kids out of a failing system or an underperforming school and making decisions about what's better for their children? Do you believe that? Parents having that ability is a good thing? Absolutely. Right. So what about this isn't giving parents more opportunity without being encumbered by a monetary or financial inability? All you have to do is do the math. I mean, first of all, $7,000 for a lot of people will not get them into a private school because the transportation hurdles, um, the tuition may be more than seven thousand. Okay, so it won't solve it for everybody. But what about the people that it will solve it for? But what it, about what about the people that I talk to every day that say that seven thousand dollars will go a long way to bridge the gap for them and give that parent more opportunity to choose? And are these public school parents you're talking to? Yeah. Well, eighty percent of them in Arizona didn't do it. Eighty nine percent in New Hampshire didn't do it. Seventy five percent in Wisconsin so didn't you're, do you're it. Just Let me finish. You, wait a minute. Seventy percent in Florida. You, you're just dismissing those parents that do. They don't matter. They don't count. No, I'm not saying they don't matter and they don't count. Not everybody. I'm just not everybody that, has an ability to take their kids into a private educational setting like some in this room, right? But you're saying that you would. You send your kids to private school, don't you? I, I, yes, I do. And you have the ability to send your kids to private school. And yet I still support public schools. I understand that you do. It, just because, wait, do you have this perception that people that send their kids to private school don't support public education? I think that that's the implication when people are asking me how I, I mean, can I'm still stand paying, up I'm, for I'm, public schools. I'm still, I'm still paying my taxes. Right. No, I mean, I, I pay for that myself. Where would your kids go to school if you did not send them to private school? Uh, well, you know, I mean, there's we have wonderful magnet schools here. There are where, some good public schools. Where are you zoned to go to public school? Um, Hillsborough. Why don't you send your kids? I there? think Hillsborough is actually a pretty good school. Why my don't kids, you kids are, my send kids your kids started in a school when they were um, in kindergarten, and that's their community, and that's where they feel comfortable. Um, but um, this isn't about me. Yes, it is. No, it is not. No, it absolutely is about you. You want the rule, you want the rule, you, you want your system and what you have in place 
not to be made available to people who don't have the means to afford it. I absolutely 100% would support that. Wait, Why please. are you not sending your kids to Hillsborough? If that is what it was about, I would support it 100%. But let me just tell you, this is not about choice. Why aren't you, why did you make the choice to send your kids to private school? I just told you, my kids started out in private school. Why did you make that choice then? Uh, I was coming back from Minnesota, and I wanted them to go to the school that I went to when I was a kid. It was a it was a cultural thing, the same way that you want somebody to go to a church that you go to. And it is, so it's fair to say that you wanted to provide the best educational opportunity for your children. I think everybody wants to provide the best educational opportunity So you felt the child. private education opportunity that you had in front of you was superior to the public education opportunity that you had in your district that you lived? Not necessarily. I think you have some kids actually do better in other environments. It, it's, it depends on the child. And but I you know. Had, but you had the ability to make that choice because you had the financial means to do so. Um, actually, that's a little more complicated, but um, that's not necessarily true. I just um, want so to I know to... why you and other Democrats in the General Assembly want to deny individuals that do not have the same financial means that you had to make that choice for themselves right. so that they can find the best educational opportunity for their children. We're not necessarily damning these public education opportunities. What we're saying is that some parents see an opportunity for their kids in the private sector that they can't afford and this would make it more affordable for them and i am so glad that you're asking me that question because that is not true i absolutely 100 percent want every family to have the opportunity to make choices for where their children can go to school this program is not going to provide that you don't that know that is you, what i am telling you but i, do, I think we're do putting the math. The, i think we're putting the cart a little bit before the horse in as much as you can't tell me a single piece of language in the bill because you haven't seen it all you have to do is do the math. You realize that it's actually financially impossible to take this program on and continue to fund our schools so that people who are in areas where they can't even access these schools will have a, a, an education well, at So all. the architects of the bill say that they're sourcing the money from, they're not get, taking the money from education sources. Uh, outside, of, outside of money following the kid, if you don't believe that the money should stay in the school system if kids leave the school system, right? So in, in other words, if a thousand kids go to a school and a hundred kids stop going to that school, should that school be funded at the level that it was previous to those a hundred kids leaving? Well, no, it won't be. It doesn't of matter it won't what be. I that, think. But that's the way that it works. Right. And that's Is that the money you're talking about? The that, schools are going to lose? That school will have to shut down. You understand. Or get better. <laughs> that's not the way it works. I mean, what seriously. do you mean that's not the way? Competition well, works. The you, free market works. Well, let me ask you this. What do you think of what's happened in states where they have implemented this? What do you think of what's happened with the 1,400% increase? I live in the in state the of Tennessee. No, I, but I'm asking you because, well, do you not think it's reasonable to look when you're making I, I intelligent not, I, decisions I, 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 about I, I, what I you're going to do? I have not studied what at, they're doing in Arizona. Okay, so so I'm telling you, they had a fourteen hundred percent increase in their in their public education. Costs. I'm asking Who's you, who's paying for that? Taxpayers. I'm, okay, I'm, Inevitably, this is a government entitlement. I'm asking it's you, it's a broadly. government entitlement, and, 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 and it's you, government entitlement for the taxpayers. And you, of all people, I think are opposed to government entitlement. Right, I'm I'm in favor of parents having the ability, like you have done, Heidi Campbell, in making the best educational choices for their children. And I do not want them to be encumbered by economic burdens that prevent them from doing so. And you do want to prevent them from doing so. Incorrect. I do not want to prevent them from doing so. And I won't let you say that to me. I absolutely well, want them to have choice because this will not provide that choice. How, it how, is how, a, how will it not it provide It is a choice? scam. This is a scam. This voucher Who is scam perpetuating the scam? Is being, Governor Lee? No, it's being subsidized by Americans for Prosperity and um, ally, the, the Alliance for Family Education that, or whatever the name of that company is, that are, uh, that group is that Corey DeAngelis belongs to. Are the, are the to. Republicans just, are they being taken in by it? They're just, they're being suckered by it? 
Well, I mean, are, are, are they a part of the scam, I'm asking you? I think there's a whole spectrum of awareness, but, you know, I think a lot of people do not realize that. But all you have to do is look at what's happened in other states to know that you're going to be putting Tennesseans in a position where they are on the hook for uh, getting their taxes raised so that we can subsidize public education because this does not work. Have you affiliated yourself with any organization or group that is opposed to this or is it just you talking as a senator uh i i'm not affiliated with any groups at all except for just me. so you're you're not you don't I mean, i'm just asking i don't know the answer to this but i'm just you you're you're coming off very much as a spokesperson for some affiliated organization that's standing against this group i, I don't i don't know if that's the case or not that's absolutely 100 percent not the case. Okay, I'm just, I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm clearing the air. I want to make sure yeah. that uh, that folks are aware. I'm here, of this. I'm here speaking. For so myself. you, you believe in private education? Sure. Yeah, I believe in public education. I believe in private education. I believe in, um, you know, academics in general. And you believe that the public education system is failing parents enough that private education should be an option available for them. If we are fully funding public education so that actually people can can take advantage of public education, then fine. But this is a have and have not situation. So I have to spend my taxpayer dollars to fully fund the public system. And in addition to that, your expectation is if my system, the system that I pay for as a taxpayer, fails my children to the point that I need to get them out of that system and put them in another system, you believe that I have I should have to pay again on top of the money that I'm already sending to the public education system as a taxpayer, that I should pay again to send them to a school to get my children an adequate education. Boy, that's some acrobatics, because no, I just think you should fully fund public then education. Then why aren't you sending your kids to Hillsboro? I just told you, this will not fix the public education problem why are you sending your kids to hillsborough not why aren't you sending your kids to that school i told you because my kids started in kindergarten a school why did I you make to. the decision then uh, because my kids started in a school in kindergarten that i went that that i had gone to i went to it and, when I was and you kid. never considered putting them in the public system i did actually i, I my daughter applied for hume fog and we didn't get in she didn't lottery now i'm talking about the system that you're zoned for do you believe that that's do you believe that that's a good school system yeah, I do, actually. I do think it's a good school system. But not good enough for your kids? No, I don't think it's not good enough for my kids. Like I said, I sent them to a, a school I went to. I just, I, I, I asked the question That's 14 okay. times. Keep, I mean, keep, that is fine. Keep I mean, personally attacking me. That's I'm not, fine. I'm not personally attacking you. But you I, are. I, I, well, but, I mean... I mean your, your actions demonstrate that you're acting in a hypocritical fashion. You say that this is not about money, yet you're willing to spend the money above and beyond your taxpayer dollars to send your kids to private school. So, Matt, to say... And, and your, your only response as to why you're doing that is to tell me that your kids go to private school because you wanted to send them to the same school you went to? Yeah. Have you, have you ever attended public education? Yeah. Where? I went to Hume Fogg. Okay, so have you ever attended a, a zoned school for public education, not a magnet school? Have you ever attended a school that you were zoned for? In Fox, public education. In Fox, a public school. Is it, is it a magnet school? Yeah. Right. So you have to apply to get in? No, you don't have to apply, but you lot I think, I, I, think I think you know exactly what I'm saying. You've never attended a public school that you were zoned for. Are you implying that my opinion as a state legislator on an issue is invalid because of a personal decision that I made? I'm, imply, I'm not implying. I'm saying, when it comes that, to I'm, I'm saying that you're a hypocrite. Okay. Well, um, you're I, a hypocrite because you attended private school all of your education. You claim that you sent your kids to private school, yet you will not. You refuse to give parents the financial ability to do the same thing that you had the financial ability to do. And you claim that you're defending those parents. That is a hypocritical position. OK, I pay for public school and private school both. That's a decision that I Why? make. And so let me just tell you something. If this was about choice, I would be all for it. And as I have told you, that is not. Yeah, what but you this don't know what about. it's about because you've never read the bill. But you, you I, you've already, you've already presented a repeal of a bill that you've never read. I do know what this is about. You've never, you've never read it. It's I, not the language of the bill has yet to be presented, Heidi. Let's not lie about things that I know aren't true. You've never read this bill. 
I am not. You can look at me angry all you want. You're lying to the people when you say that you know what's in this bill. I am not lying. I know exactly what's in this bill because no, you we've don't. seen it, it happen in three other states and the same exact organization right. is here pushing it. Heidi, so we know. I did, we know. It is not my purpose to upset you. It's my purpose to tell the audience the truth. You have not read the bill that will be presented before the Senate or before the House of Representatives. I know you haven't read it. You know you haven't read it. I have and actually. I, don't, I have actually read it. It's been filed and I've read it. You've read the bill that's going to be presented in the House of Representatives? I have absolutely read it. You can go online right now and look at it. That is not, you know very well that's not the bill that's going to be filed. I mean, what what do you think think we're doing here? You know that they're going to present a bill next week. Don't you? I do. Why don't you know that? I do know that. Then you know what you just said is a lie. That you've not read the bill if they're presenting it next week, Heidi. So, Matt, I'm not going to be called a liar. Oh, you? Well, well, that's fine. I, I'm sorry. I'm not a liar. Well, then then you can leave. Goodbye. Okay. Yeah, I'll see you. Take care. I mean, if you're not going to be called a liar, I don't want to insult you. I said it to Heidi Campbell for the last time on the Matt Murphy Radio Show on Supertalk 99.7 WTM.